No one ever wants to receive the heartbreaking news that either them or their children have a rare disease. I liked awesome disease best. It's possibly one of the hardest moments of your life, especially if that disease comes with complicated health effects. Though some disorders can come with some surprising side effects that can ease the pain. From having no fear to learning anything, here are 15 rare diseases that give people superhero-like abilities. Number 15. Myostatin-related muscle hypertrophy. You might see a muscly child and think they've just spent a lot of time playing on their jungle gym. Even seeing muscly adults might make you think they spend every waking hour at the gym. While that might be the case, those people may also have myostatin-related muscle hypertrophy. This condition is rare and genetic, but it's not life-threatening, nor does it affect the person's intelligence. Instead, it causes them to have twice as much muscle mass as normal and reduced body fat. Some sources say that an increase in muscle size doesn't necessarily mean they have increased muscle strength, but that can be the case. They may even use their muscles to their advantage in competitions without doing as much work as other contestants. <laughs> Because this disease is rare, there is no way of knowing how many people have it. Though it's often diagnosed by seeing clinical signs, genetic testing, and comparing muscle size in x-rays and MRIs. Doctors can also measure body fat with a caliper or ultrasound to compare it to the average person. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 14. Erbach Vitha Disease. As terrifying as Erbach Vitha disease sounds, you won't hear people who have it complaining. In fact, they will have no fear at all, because that is exactly what this disease incorporates. The complete absence of fear. It's a recessive genetic disorder that is quite rare and has only had around 400 diagnoses since its discovery. Eric Erbach and Camilo Vita were the first people to report it in 1929, but cases may have existed as early as 1908. The symptoms of Erbach Vita disease differ from person to person. Some people find they have scar hard skin or easily damaged skin, a hoarse voice, and poor wound healing abilities. Others have dry and wrinkling skin caused by the thickening of mucous membranes and skin. Epilepsy and neuropsychiatric abnormalities may also be present due to hardened brain tissues in the medial temporal lobes. When this condition affects the part of your brain known as the amygdala, it changes your ability to process fear and long-term memories. Therefore, situations that would frighten the average person don't seem to bother some Erbach Vitha disease sufferers. Basically, they would be more than happy to get rid of the spiders in your house without shaking in their boots. Number 13. Congenital Analgesia Congenital analgesia, or congenital insensitivity to pain, is a rare condition. People with it can't feel pain, never have, and likely never will, because it causes the typical physical signs of pain to be inhibited. A person with this condition can tell the difference between hot and cold, dull and sharp, but they just don't feel the discomfort and pain when determining the difference. Hot and cold, I can't feel extreme hot or extreme cold. As a result, people with congenital analgesia tend to have a variety of injuries and illnesses that go undetected. It's probably not surprising then that there's a reduced life expectancy in people with this condition. It's also associated with a loss of sense of smell known as anosmia. Imagine how strange it would be to cook in the kitchen not knowing that your hand is burning on the stove. Or you're chopping carrots, cut your finger, and carry on as if nothing happened. It's a strange concept, but one that people with this condition have to contend with every day. Fortunately, treatment options are being worked on. An opioid called naloxone allowed a woman to experience pain for the first time. Number 12. Vampire Disorder Vampire disorder, or porphyrius, is the term given to eight blood disorders that affect your body's ability to make heme, a component in hemoglobin, which is a protein that transports oxygen. 
The symptoms of this condition might surprise you, but it will allow you to understand why some people call it a vampire disorder. People with porphyrius are anemic, which makes them always look pale and feel very tired. They also can't come out into the daylight because even a small amount of ultraviolet light on a cloudy day can cause blistering on the body parts that are exposed. I'd probably look about the age of a 90 year old, I'd have no lips or nose. This is caused by a buildup of protoporphyrin components, one of which is called protoporphyrin IX. When it's exposed to light, chemicals are produced that damage surrounding cells and cause blistering, burning, swelling, and redness, even through window glass. Many people with porphyrias stay indoors during the day and receive blood transfusions to alleviate some of the many debilitating symptoms. This condition may have given weight to vampire folklore. When we hear about vampires, we associate them with blood, staying out of the daylight, blistering in sunlight, and looking very pale. They also only come out at night. Number 11. Savant Syndrome have you ever sat studying in your room, feeling tired and stressed, and wishing you could just learn everything with ease? Believe it or not, some people can do just that, with a condition known as Savant Syndrome. This syndrome is rare and gives people mental disabilities that allow them to excel with particular skills. For many, it's shown in being able to make rapid calculations, remember complicated details, produce music, or create works of art. I said read the telephone book last night, did Sally. People with Savant Syndrome also usually have a neurodevelopmental disorder like autism or a brain injury. It's thought to affect around one in a million people, with more males having it than females by a ratio of 6 to 1. However, there's only thought to be 100 or fewer people with this condition. If you've seen the film Rain Man, then you might be surprised to learn that the main character was inspired by a man with Savant Syndrome, called Kim Peek. Kim could read both pages of a book at the same time and remember up to 98% of the contents. Throughout his lifetime, he read around 12,000 books and became an expert in at least 15 subjects. Number 10. Munchmeyer Disease Munchmeyer disease, stone man disorder, or fibrodysplasia ossificans progressiva is an awful connective tissue disease that essentially makes your bones feel like stone. Fortunately, it's quite rare, which is good news considering there's no cure or treatment. This condition is caused by a gene mutation that affects your body's repair mechanisms. As a result, muscles, ligaments, and tendons can become permanently fused through injury or spontaneously. Essentially, bone forms to replace damaged muscle tissue. The new bone formations end up making a second kind of skeleton in the sufferer's body, which stops them from being able to move. Average lifespan is about 45. Given that there are no treatment options, many sufferers simply position their bodies in a particular way they know will make them comfortable during a flare-up. After all, they may not be able to move from that position when bones start to grow. Strangely, this condition can be relatively easy to spot in children because they often have missing joints, a deformed big toe, and lumps at their minor joints. They will then start growing new bones from the top down, from their neck to their shoulders, arms, chest, and down to their feet. Sounds like something out of a horror movie. Number 9. Human Magnetism Medical professionals are smart people. They understand a lot about diseases and how they come about. But human magnetism is one of those conditions that has a big question mark above it. It's when some people have skin that tends to cause items to stick to it. Using the word magnetism, you would assume it would just be metal objects, as in you walk past the fridge and it sucks you in like a vacuum. But people with human magnetism have skin that doesn't just stick to metal, but all kinds of materials, like brass glass, porcelain, wood, plastic, and aluminum. All of which don't have ferromagnetic properties. When someone claims to be magnetic, they're often checked to see if they're producing any magnetic fields. They aren't. So scientists wonder whether their skin friction is the cause of this unique disorder. This might be proven right, as when they put talcum powder on their skin, they lose their unique ability. 
Fortunately, this condition isn't one that tends to have many adverse effects. In fact, some people use it as their claim to fame. Etibar Elchiev from Georgia, for example, has a Guinness World Record for the most spoons placed on a human body. Number 8. Hyperthymesia don't you find it frustrating when you don't write something down because you're sure you'll remember it and then you don't? Well, people with hypermythesia don't have this problem. They remember every single thing about their life, including personal experiences and events. People with hypermythesia are described as having an autobiographical memory. They can remember every single day of their lives in nearly perfect detail, and even events that happened that they find important. If you give them a date, they can also recall the events of that specific day. Surprisingly though, they don't score higher on memory tests, as you would expect. Instead, their skills become useful when they need to recall information in everyday life after the age of 10 and a half. People with this condition also tend to have obsessive-compulsive tendencies. However, scientists aren't sure whether this helps with their memories or not. A 20-year-old Durham University student was the first person in Britain to say he had this ability. He never knew how rare it was, but he also didn't know anyone else who could do what he did. The man also said he's not aware of how he came to remember his life with so much precision. It just came to him. Number 7. The Wim Hof Method Netherlands-born Wim Hof considers himself an extreme athlete and a self-proclaimed ice man. To be honest, we're gonna have to agree with him. He looks to be in perfect condition for a man who climbed to 24,000 feet up Mount Everest in just boots and shorts, ran the fastest half marathon barefoot in the snow, and dangled from two hot air balloons by one finger at an altitude of 1,900 feet. With no frostbite, bruises, or brain damage, this man seems capable of absolutely anything. Inviting me to come in and take part. Wim said his abilities come from the Wim Hof method. He takes short, sharp breaths to start a controlled style of hyperventilation. Researchers weren't convinced, so they carried out a series of brain and body tests. They noticed that even though his body was exposed to cold, his skin remained unchanged. The PET scans he went through even suggested that his breathing exercises could have warmed the blood in his lungs' capillaries to improve circulation throughout his body. So, as it turns out, much of what Wim Hof has done could possibly be connected to his unique Wim Hof method. Number 6. Gigantism being short has its downfalls, like not reaching the top cabinet or changing a light bulb. But tall people will tell you that being tall is also no walk in the park either. Especially if you have the rare condition called gigantism or giantism. Overproduction of growth hormones causes this condition during childhood. Instead of growing to an average height, they often end up between 7 and 9 feet tall. Researchers believe that increased growth hormone levels before the growth plate fuses just after puberty could be to blame. But why are there increased levels of the growth hormone? You know it's not on the schedule. More often than not, a tumor on the pituitary gland is the reason. The signs of excessive growth become noticeable when the child is around 13 years old. It's around this time that associated health complications occur, such as hypertension. A variety of treatment options have been tried for this condition, including surgery and drugs. However, most of them have not been accepted or viewed as ideal. Although some people benefit from pegvisament treatment, which reduces the levels of the childhood growth hormone IGFI. Number 5 foreign accent syndrome. Many people have seen articles in magazines about people going to bed with an American accent and waking up with a British one. As you read through the article, you might even think they're a liar, because how on earth could that actually happen? Surprisingly, it's a real thing, known as foreign accent syndrome. Foreign accent syndrome is a speech disorder that causes someone to start speaking with a foreign tongue. It can be caused by a traumatic brain injury, multiple sclerosis, and strokes. They think I'm talking about a baby cat and I'm not. I'm saying I'm just kidding. 
though sometimes there has been no apparent cause. Speech can be altered in many ways, such as the tongue placement to sound foreign, the intonation, and timing. The speech is intelligible, just different from how that person may have previously spoken. Many cases of this condition have been reported around the world. A Japanese person woke up speaking Korean, a British person started speaking French, an American started speaking with a British accent, and a Spanish person even started speaking in Hungarian. One of the best treatment options for this syndrome is speech therapy. Many people will go back to speaking how they did before. Number 4. The Super Sprinter Variant I don't know about you, but I often wonder why I'm not an athlete. I just don't get how I can't start running at the speed of light and lifting weights like they weigh nothing at all. Of course, it couldn't have anything to do with the fact that I'm not training to be an athlete. I blame the ACTN3 gene. We all have this gene, but particular variants of it produce a protein called alpha-actinin-3. This protein has control over your fast twitch muscle fibers, which are cells that allow you to tense and flex the muscles you need for weightlifting and sprinting. This particular variant has been associated with power athletes. That's hardly fair, is it? This surprising protein was discovered in 2003 when geneticists started looking at power athletes and sprinters. They found that very very few of them had two defective ACTN3 copy. Over 430 Australian athletes were included in the study, and 50 were Olympic competing athletes. Less than 3% had two defective ACTN3 copies. Another study even found that if you have two active copies of the gene, it could be the difference between setting a world record and only being a finalist. Number 3. Polymelia Polymelia is not a rare disease, but it is a congenital disability. It causes people to have more than the usual number of limbs you would expect them to have. There are many names for this condition depending on where the limb grows or how it grows. In most cases, whatever extra limb a person has, it's usually deformed or shrunken. Sometimes, these extra limbs are caused by an embryo beginning as conjoined twins, but that is not always the case. If you have the dipygus condition, you have a smaller extra leg between your two standard legs caused by the body axis forking out. If you have notomelia, you've got a form of polymelia where the additional limb forms near or on your back's midline. This condition, surprisingly, is quite common in Angus cattle. Perhaps less common than other forms of polymelia is cephalomelia. This is a Greek word that means head limb condition, and as you guessed it, it means the extra limb is rooted on your head. Several polymelia cases were noted in recent years, such as a girl born in Detroit in 2005 with an extra leg, and a boy in Shanghai in 2006 born with a fully formed third arm. Number 2. The Unbreakable Mutation if you've ever wanted to be a superhero or a daredevil, the thought of breaking bones may have put you off. But if you had a genetic mutation that caused unusually high bone density, that may not be a problem. A family in Connecticut was the subject of a study because they had high bone density compared to the average person. So far, researchers know that low bone density is caused by disruption of the LRP5 gene, the family with high bone density linked to the same gene. Scientists began to wonder whether different mutations in that gene could alter the bone density. This could spell great things for people who have osteo Osteoporosis. The probability is you'll hand it on to half your children. According to researchers involved in the study, the Connecticut family had such strong bones that there had never been any history of a fracture. They even said they rival characters from the movie Unbreakable, in which they are involved in a terrible train wreck but walk away with no broken bones. Out of all 20 family members who provided blood samples and bone density measurements, seven had incredibly high bone density throughout their bodies, including their spines and hips. 9 of the 20 just had average bone density. Number 1. The Super Sleeper Mutation 
We are always told that we need around 7 to 9 hours of sleep per night. For many people, that is definitely not possible, but with crazy work schedules and children. But imagine if you could manage your busy life, sleep with very few hours, but still wake up feeling fantastic and well rested. If you have a specific gene mutation on your HDEC2 gene, that's possible. People with this gene can feel energized on just four hours of sleep per night. Scientists call them short sleepers and say they even have built-in immunity to the often awful sleep deprivation effects. This is because the HDEC2 gene is the circadian rhythm regular gene, and it clearly operates differently from what most people have. It's also known as the Thatcher gene because Margaret Thatcher said she only used to sleep around four hours per night when she was in office. Studies of people with and without this gene provided some surprising results. A family who had two members who would get out of bed very early slept an average of 6.25 hours. The family members without the gene slept for an average of over eight hours, even though they fell asleep at the same time. I don't know about you, but I had no idea most of these conditions existed. While no one wished to have any of these illnesses and diseases, at least they aren't always all bad. Do you know anyone with any of these conditions? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.